الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اليوم واحد وعشرون من شهر ربيع الأول ألف وأربعمائة وثلاثة وأربعون الموافق لي ثمان وعشرين من شهر أكتوبر ألفين وواحد وعشرين نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك الداء والدواء أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يغفر لنا الزلات ويرفع درجة المؤلف في العليين So today inshallah we will continue from the scene of the mu'allif wa min hadha shirk wal qadariya So the shaykh is talking about the second type of shirk where a person you know ja'ala ma'allahi ilahan akhar wa lam yattil asma'ahu wa sifatihi wa rububiyyatihi ka shirk in nasara You know those one they agree that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and he is alone and he is this this and that by word But at the same time, they attributed uh, partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, it is a part of this also the shirk of, of al-majus, you know. Majus, we know who they are. And uh, also the shirk of al-qadariya. Al-qadariya, these are uh, those who believes in uh, the qadar in the wrong way. These are part of the Mu'tazila, Al-Mu'tazila Al-Qadariya. The opposite and the contrary to these people, they are the Jabariya. You have Al-Qadariya, you have Jabariya. And subhanAllah, one of the the useless talks you can ever hear about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his knowledge is this belief of the Qadariya. Jabariya believes that we have no control over our actions. That's Jabariya. Al-Jabariya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pushing us and forcing us to do what he wants even if we don't want. You get it? And now I have uh, people in my class, uh, Sister Burni, Sister Nurlila, Ahmad, Aisha, you know, uh, Khalila, and uh, the rest, and Sheikh Abdurrahman. And whoever, I did not see those people who are behind the, the screen. According to Jabariya, each and every one of you found himself in this class by force. <laughs> you did not want to come by yourself. You just see yourself in the class. That's Jabariya's belief. You know. You know this is actually against even the aqidah of atfal. You know, atfal tifl will tell you, you know it doesn't work like that. I come by myself. So the one who drinks wine. It shouldn't have an issue, you know. The one who drinks, uh, uh, the one who worships idol shouldn't have an issue. Why is that? Because they don't have control over themselves. Allah SWT is controlling everything. They said they are just like a risha fil hawa. You know, you know the, 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 uh, uh, the piece of, uh, the feather of the, of the bird that is flying in the air. They say we are just like that. We do not have option, you know, and choice in whatever we do it. That's the Jibariya, you know, subhanAllah. That's Jibariya. This is against the common sense. Because nobody amongst you, you know, uh, 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 feels or believes that somebody is pushing him and forcing him to do what he is doing. And the choice you are making, they say, absolutely your own choice. And as I always say, if you're going to take this Aqidah, Imagine what is going to happen on earth, you know. You know, look at the, the Christian community, you know, where they adopt Christianity as their religion in the wrong way. And we don't even believe that there is something called Christianity, but let's assume that there is something called Christianity. Assumption, you know. We don't believe that it does exist because Allah never sent a religion called Christianity or Judaism or any other ism except Islam. But let's just assume that there is something new. Imagine if people accept that faith, what will happen? Crimes are going to be rampant. Why is that? Because everyone believes that somebody is there standing for him. Whatever I do in this life, somebody is there to stand for me. You're not going to get into trouble because somebody died because of your sins. 
you know, that's an atonement of the sins and the ex 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 expiation, you know. You don't need to worry so much because Isa alayhi salam, according to them, died. You know, we don't even believe that he's dead, he's still alive. But according to them, so that translates why the rate of the crimes and its behavior, you know, is at the increase in those places. Imagine if we accept the Jabariya concept that nobody has a control. Then if somebody steals, he will tell us that this is not my fault. If somebody drinks wine, this is not my fault. The one who raped, the one who accused, the one who attacked, the one who do, does all of those stupidities, you know, they can simply tell us that we are not involved. We don't know what happened, we just found ourselves doing these things, you know. I just want you to feel how evil is this, is this Akida, you know. So this is a very wrong aqidah that goes against the essence of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which talks about responsibility. You are responsible for your action and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, given uh, us at the same time full right to choose what we want and to stay away from that which we don't want. And we are responsible for our own actions, you know, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question us about what we did. You know. So that's Jabariya. On the contrary, you have the Qadariya. These are the people that we are supposed to be discussing here. Those guys say that no, you are responsible of everything. And actually, according to the Qadariya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not know, subhanAllah. That's kufr, that's kufr, kufr, kufr. If somebody believes that Allah SWT doesn't have knowledge, that's kufr. So they say Allah SWT did not even know what we are doing, you know, until the time we do it. Yeah, you go to school, according to Qadari, Allah did not know that you are going to choose to go to school until the time he sees you going to school, then he knows that, yeah, this is what this person is planning to do. So you can see how, how useless, you know, is this uh, statement, you know, subhanAllah. I don't know, how did shaitan manage to deceive them to put in their brain this thought, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge is qasim, is deficient. There are things which are hidden from the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which he never know them until the time it happens, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know that they're taking place. You know. So these are the qadariya. They believe that the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deficient and he doesn't know what we are doing and we are responsible of all of our actions and there is nothing which is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and at the same time is part of our action. So it means Allah created us but he did not create our action. We are the creators of our actions according to the Qadriya. We are the, creation, uh, the creators of our actions according to the Qadriya. That's why Ibn Qayyim says, وَمِنْ هَذَا شِرْكُ الْقَدَرِيَةُ قَائِلِينَ بِأَنَّ الْحَيْوَانَ هُوَ الَّذِي يَخْلُقُ أَفْعَالَ نَفْسِهِ They said an animal or human, human being or creation, they are the one who are creating their own actions. Allah SWT did not create that. وَأَنَّهَا تَحْدُثُ بِدُونِ مَشِيئَةِ اللَّهِ وَقُدْرَتِهِ وَإِرَادَتِهِ and subhanAllah, they say all of these activities that we're doing, they happens without any mashia from Allah, any qudra from Allah SWT. He has no power, no ability over them. We're the one who initiated those activities without his knowledge. And he doesn't want them to happen, you know. You know, subhanAllah, that's what they believe in, you know. Even the Bedouin doesn't believe in that, in the... Uh, uh, Al Hanafi quoted an event whereby a Bedouin came and he found one of the scholars of the Qadariya. And he told him, Sheikh, uh, I lost my camel, somebody stole it. Please, since you are a Sheikh, ask Allah to get it back. Ask Allah for me to get it back. You know, subhanAllah. So the Sheikh said, Allahumma, <laughs> look at this dua, you know. He said, Allahumma, he said, Ya Allah, you did not want, look at this evil dua. He said, Ya Allah, you did not want this camel to be stolen. You did not want this camel to be stolen. But it was stolen by somebody. Ya Allah, bring it back. 
The Bedouin said, wait a minute, what are you saying? You mean he did not want it to be stolen and then somebody stole it? He said, yeah, Allah SWT doesn't want it to be stolen. He said, somebody stole it and he doesn't like that. And somebody stole it. He said, yes. The Bedouin says, no, if this is the case, then I don't want this. He said, why? He said, because since he couldn't have the power to stop the theft from taking place, I am afraid he might want the camel to be brought and that guy who stole it has the power over him, he, can, he will not bring it. So it's better for me to go and look for a way out by myself. He said, since at the first place he, try, he did, doesn't want it to be stolen, but it got stolen. Now he might want it to be returned and it will not be returned. So I don't want that. SubhanAllah. That's absolutely perfect reply to that person. You know, from who? From a Bedouin. Somebody who is not an educated person, but he lives within his common sense. He knows that, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not like that. This is not Allah. There is no way for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, I mean, not want something. And at the same time, you see the thing happening. Wallahi, it would never happen. There is no way for the thing to happen. If Allah doesn't want it to happen, there is no way for it to happen. You know? To have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that I don't want this to happen. And then somebody will come and bring it. That's a joke. Well, that's a joke. Actually, that's that's I think you have to look for some other words, you know. Even in the in the realm of jokes, I think this one will not exist. But Shaitan deceived the Qadiriyah, they believe in that. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have any connection to our own actions. We are the one who are creating everything. And they are trying to protect one of the principles which they brought and misunderstood it. One of these principles they brought is justice, al-adl, you know, al-adl. What does adl mean? Adl means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never oppress anyone. So they say, if we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is creating our own action, but then at the end of the day, he punish us because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created our actions and then at the end of the day he punished us for doing those actions they said this is unfair and this is injustice and that's why we have to say that a slave is the one who is creating his own action we have to say that a slave is the one who is creating his own action Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have connection to that so Allah told him don't drink wine if you went and drink wine he is the one who created the drinking of the wine and created the ability and created everything. Allah, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not involved. And as such, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can punish him for that. That's the Qadariyah. The Prophet said, and these are one of the earliest groups that exist in Islam. You know, in the time of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu And that's actually the reason why the hadith the second hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, in Arba al Nawiyah exists, that hadith of Jibreel, the long one. Some people came from Sham and they're looking for a companion of the Prophet so to ask him about the existence of the Qadriya. Those people who say, La Qadr, Wal Amr Unuf. You know, what does that mean? They mean there is no Qadr, everything is, is initiated and is new to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is new to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever we're doing is new to Allah. Allah doesn't know it. So Abdullah ibn Umar told them that you have to go and tell them that I have disconnected myself from them. They are not from me and I'm not from them. And they cannot have the true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless if they believe in the Qadr. And this is one of the, the causes and the evil consequences of studying the falsafa, going deep in the falsafa. Up to date, I'm telling you, those philosophers, those Muslims who study this so much, you will find them, they are the easiest people to go against the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the Nusus of the Quran. Everything has to fit their own okul, according to them, you know. You find the vast majority of, or everyone believing in something, but a philosopher will tell you no. Because his akal doesn't go like that. And all of these things are taken from who? From the Yunnan, the Greece or the Greek, you know. These are the things that we transferred into our own community and we started uh, putting them in the, in the wrong way. So Muslims should be very careful, very, very careful, very, very careful. That's what uh, Imam Dhabi was saying, that this is the knowledge that al bihi awla. Ignorance in it is, is greater than knowing it. Mm.
Many people get deeper in it. They lost, even some of them, they lost their religion completely. They lost their religion completely. You know, we do have people who will criticize Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. tell you, yeah, we take from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If what he says, it makes sense. You know, he's a philosopher. Yeah, yeah, among us, you know, among us, you know. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala grant us good and tawfiq, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala guide us and them. You know. So he says, وَمِنْ هَذَا شِرْكُ الْقَدَرِيَّةِ وَلِهَذَا كَانُوا أَشْبَاهَ الْمَجُوسِ that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said they are like the Majus. In the hadith he says, Al-Qadariyyatu Majusu hadhi al-Ummah. Qadariyya, they are the Majus of this Ummah. Al-Qadariyyatu Majusu hadhi al-Ummah. Qadariyya, they are the Majus of this Ummah. You know the Majus, they worship two ilah. Ilah al-Nur and Ilah al-Dhulma. The ilah for the light and the ilah for the darkness. And you have the Qadariyya also, they have two ilah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and a creation because they say we also create our own action so they they believe that there, there are two creators you know there are two creators among them وَمِنْ هَذَا شِرْكُ الَّذِي حَاجَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ فِي رَبِّهِ إِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّي الَّذِي يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ قَالَ أَنَا يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ He said it's also part of it the shirk of that person who uh, was debating with Ibrahim concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his existence. You know, so that uh, person, whether he's Namrud or whoever uh, that person might be, you know, so he says, Rabbi alladhi yuhi wa meet kala ana wa You know, he said he also, he, he can uh, give life to people and he can <laughs> give death to people, you know. And subhanAllah, according to the history, they said he brought two, two people amongst the prisoners, you know. He killed one of them and he told Ibrahim, you can see, him. I killed this one. And he told the other one, you can go. <laughs> SubhanAllah. And so Ibrahim realized that he's dealing with a very silly and stupid person. If he keeps on debating with him, he will go and uh, keep on committing these tragedies, you know, and injustice against others. So Ibrahim uses another evidence to stop him from making a move. So that guy says he is also he is also like Allah. He said he is Allah. He also created. You know, in the way Allah created, he said he also can create, he also can kill, he also can do this and that. He also can kill, he also can cause somebody to live. So he made himself as a last that gives life and also give death. Just like the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused a person to live and also others to die. If he says this, then khalas. Let him do his own thing, you know. That one that he did also is not like a last one. It's absolutely different, you know. There is no room of comparison actually. But Ibrahim, just leave him with his own faith and tell him indirectly but if this, uh, that if this is the case, then you should be able to do the opposite of what Allah SWT is doing. For instance, he brought the sun from the west, I'm sorry, the east. You should bring yours from the West. Yeah. When you say you can give life and death, then you should have the ability to bring the sun. That's much easier actually. To bring the sun from the West. Allah is bringing it from the East. So bring yours from the West. Allah says, فَبُهِتَ لِذِي كَفَرَ SubhanAllah. That was the thing that quieted him. He lost the debate. He was so embarrassed, you know. And disappointed because he can't. What can he do, you know, in that? Even if he's going to use shayateen, what can he do? They can't debate with Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know. They know that. So nobody was there to support him. So, uh, so Ibrahim told him that, do that for us. To confirm that you also have the capacity in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. وَلَيْسَ هَذَا انْتِقَالًا كَمَا زَعَمَ بَعْضُ أَهَلِ الْجَدَلِ this is not moving from 
I mean, it's not like, okay, yeah, you win in this, let's move to another, another thing. It's not about that. There are some people who are amongst those people who are, are very uh, particular and concerned with the jadal, you know, and mantik and kalam. They said, no, this is intercal. It's like, okay, we, 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 we close this one and we move to another, another thing. It says, no, this is Ilzam. Ibrahim is just trying to tell him that, yeah, if this is the case, then you must have the ability to do this also. If you can do this, then you must have the ability to do this also. If you believe that this is correct, yeah, so then do this. You know. And these, these, these type of people, subhanAllah, if you take the history, you know, how did he die? Mosquito, you know, <laughs> Dubab, you know, something bit him. That small, tiny creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was capable of taking off his life. What happened to the divinity? What happened to the power? What happened to the ability? What happened to an uhiwa umid, you know? Why can't he give his, I mean, life to himself and stop the death from approaching him? وَمِنْ هَذَا شِرْكُ كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ يُشْرِكُ بِالْكَوَاكِبِ الْأُلُوِيَّةِ وَيَجْعَلُهَا أَرْبَابًا مُدَبِّرَةً لِأَمْرِ هَذَا الْعَالَمِ كَمَا هُوَ مَذْهَبُ مُشْرِكِي الصَّابِئَةِ وَغَيْرِهِمْ وَمِنْ هَذَا شِرْكُ عُبَّادِ الشَّمْسِ وَبَادِ النَّارِ وَغَيْرِهِمْ He says this is, it is also part of this shirk, the shirk of those people who believe in the kawakib to be those one who are controlling the affairs of the creation down there. They said the kawakib that you see each and every one of them has his own a capacity to control what we do in the, uh, here on earth. The rain comes, you know, uh, uh, existence of things, birth to the people, you know, all of these things that used to be the cultural practice of the Jahiliyyah, you get an idea, which is also taken, you know, by the, the magician, the fortune tellers, you know, they all use these type of things to uh, detect what will happen in the future, supported by the devils, of course, when they go and steal the information from their heavens. And also, it is also part of the faith of the, the Firqa as -Sabia. Sabia, this is one of the controversial matters among the scholars who are actually Sabia, at this Sabia, who are actually Sabia. And so you have so many views. Some of them said these are the people of Ibrahim alayhi And up to date also we have Diana, Sabia al Mindaiya in Iraq, you know, they, they exist. They have a religion. You see them, you see a person, mashallah, their sheikh is like, uh, like the Muslimin, you know, uh, the beard, the turban, you know. And they have also water like a Christian, you know, they go and do the, this washing themselves, you know. Uh, they, 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 uh, 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 Christian, I think they, they did it once in life or once in a year. Okay, who cares? But these ones, they do, they did it, I think, every day or every week, weekly. They go and the sheikh will wash you, you know. They have uh, different types of prayers, you know. They pray differently. They have different wudu also. And they claim that they are following Yahya ibn Zakaria. They are not following. <laughs> You have Sabia in this. You have some people who say these are people who worship in Malaika. You know. So the point is, Allahu Alam, it looks like Ibn Qayyim is referring to those people who are in the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, those people who are dealing with the kawakib. You know, worshiping the kawakib. Okay. shirku bad shamsi, bad And also they, you have some also who are worshiping the shams and worshiping the, the fire. You know, you have a bad yeah. You have some people who will tell you that his object of worship is the one that should be worshipped, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have some of them who will say, no, he is the greatest of the aliha. The one that he is worshipping is bigger than any ilah. Some of them will say, no, no, I don't claim that uh, that mine is the biggest, but is one of them, one of those who should be, should be washed. And also they believe that if they worship those objects alone, you know, they humiliated themselves to them, you know, they, 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 they humble themselves to them, they will take care of them. You know, that idols will be taking care of them. And some of them will tell you that 
No, the one that we're worshiping now on earth, uh, his job is to bring us closer to the one on top. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or whatever they believe to be on top. So they have darajat, you know. He worships this one, but even that will take him to the one in the next stage, and the next stage, and the one will take it to the next, 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 next. Hatta tukarribahu tilka al-alihatu ila Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the time they bring him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fataratan takthuru al-aliha wal wasa'itu wa taratan taqil. So sometimes you find so many people in between, you know, so many objects in between, and sometimes you find only little among uh, among those idols. They put them between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and themselves. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu wa ta'ala. قَالَ فَصْلٌ وَأَمَّا الشِّرْكُ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ فَهُوَ أَسْهَلُ مِنْ هَذَا الشِّرْكِ So uh, this one is very important, you know. Uh, that the first one, inshallah, the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are many of us are away from it. But this one that Ibn al-Qaim will be talking about, this is the most dangerous one. The most dangerous one. قَالَ وَأَمَّا الشِّرْكُ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ فَهُوَ أَسْهَلُ مِنْ هَذَا As for the shirk in the ibadah, this is much easier than the first one. أَمْرًا and more hidden than the first one. Because the first one is very obvious. It's very difficult for a person to hide the shirk of the first type. But the second one, no. That one sometimes happens without the proper realization of its existence by the one who is doing it. Because usually it happens from somebody who believes that there is none to be worshipped except Allah. Subhanallah. And also who believe that nobody benefits, nobody harm, nobody harm, nobody benefits, nobody gives, nobody uh, 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 I mean just, I mean stop somebody from reaching from getting something except Allah. And there is none to be worshipped except Allah. No creator, no controller except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَكِنْ لَا يَخُصُّ اللَّهَ فِي مُعَامَلَةِ وَعُبُودَةِ So this shirk happens from somebody who believes in all of these things. You know. He believes that Allah SWT is alone. Allah SWT is this. Allah SWT is this. But his problem is, when it comes to how to deal with Allah SWT, this is where the problem lies. He associates partner with Allah SWT. وَلَكِنْ لَا يَخُصُّ اللَّهَ فِي مُعَامَلَةِ وَعُبُودَةِهِ بَلْ يَعْمَلُ لِحَظِّ نَفْسِهِ تَارَةً so he works for the sake of his, his own benefit sometimes and sometimes also for the sake of the dunya. And sometimes he does it because he wants to have high position, you know. And he wants to be respected, you know, in the khalqi taratan, you know. Uh, uh, he wants to be respected by the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلِلَّهِ مِنْ عَمَلِهِ وَسَعِهِ نَصِيبٌ وَلِنَفْسِهِ وَحَظِهِ وَلِنَفْسِهِ وَحَظِهِ وَحَوَاهُ نَصِيبٌ So you see this person, when he associates partner with Allah SWT in his dealings, in his mu'amala, uh, Ibn Qayyim says, you will find him in that action. He's given Allah SWT some portion of his action and some portion to satisfy his own desire and his interests. And sometimes shaitan also takes some portion, and sometimes the other creation will take the portion. So, so he is, you know, how many partners he has with, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Three. He's doing it for the sake of Allah and also his own dunya interests, and also to please, uh, I mean, others, which shaitan will be happy with that. Subhanallah. Ibn al-Qaim says this is the, the situation of and the status of the vast majority of the people. And this is the shirk that the Prophet وسلم, has said about it. In the narration of Ibn Hibban, the Prophet وسلم, has said, الشرك في هذه الأمة أخفى من دبيب النملة. The Prophet ﷺ said the shirk in this ummah is more hidden, uh, is more hidden than the Bibun Namla. 
the creeping and the walking of a namla. Namla is a is an ant. Did you ever hear the sound of the ant moving? <laughs> Except in the cartoon, maybe. <laughs> It does have the sound, but we don't hear it because it's so small, you know. It's so small insect. So the Prophet Sallallahu in this hadith, he says, Akhfa min the bibin namla. It's more hidden than the movement of the of the namla. Qalu kaifananju min hu ya Rasulullah. They said, ya Rasulullah, then how can we protect ourselves from this shirk then? If this is the case, you know. Qalu kaifananju min hu ya Rasulullah. They said, how can we protect ourselves? from this shirk, if this is the case. قَالَ قُولِ اللَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِكَ أَنْ أُشْرَكَ بِكَ وَأَنْ أَعْلَمْ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُكَ لِمَا لَا أَعْلَمْ The Prophet said, you should say, Ya Allah, I seek refuge with you. You know, uh, I mean, uh, Ya Allah, protect me from committing shirk. You know, associate partner with you, وَأَنَا أَعْلَمْ While I know what I'm doing. Out of knowledge, you know, I know that I shouldn't do this, but I do it. And I, and Ya Allah, I ask you to forgive me, you know, for the things I, I have done which I do not know that I shouldn't do them. So any shirk which I do, which I did out of knowledge, Ya Allah, protect me from being involved in committing shirk out of knowledge. And also, Ya Allah, protect me from doing the shirk out of ignorance. And those things that I did without knowing, Ya Allah forgive me those things. It's a very good dua, but the hadith has a lot of questions on it. <clears throat> uh, if you look at it, then the, the scholar said this narration is weak. Although some scholars said it has a shahid, you know, another uh, statement, you know, and a, a other hadith that can strengthen, you know, this one to make it stronger. Uh, uh, the meaning is correct, you know, even if you don't accept the the authenticity of the hadith, but the meaning is is correct. Qala farriya ukulluhu shirkun kama qala ta'ala riya is shirk in all of its forms is shirk in all of its forms is shirk kama qala ta'ala just like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qul innama ana basharun mithlukum yuha ilayya annama ilahukum ilahu wahid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says tell them innama ana basharun mithlukum I am none other than the Bashar. Bashar means human being. Mithilukum like you. You ha ilayya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing to me the wahi. So the difference between the Prophet sallallahu and the rest of the creation is that he receives wahi. And the rest of the creation are not receiving the wahi from Allah. And that's the biggest difference, you know, very big difference. You cannot reach the Prophet sallallahu in that regard. And he has other uh, specialties also, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him the leadership of the Ulul Azm. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen him to be among the best of the best, those five messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who nobody is, is better than them. So Allah says, Qul inna So this is a refutation against anyone who believes that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is not, is not human being. Uh, during uh, these days, you know, when people are having their own events, you know, about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I hear a lot of approaches, a lot of approaches. You know, somebody attended an event, you know, he found a speaker was saying that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is not human being. And I don't know how does he translate this ayah, Allahu alam. And he says he's not human being. He's not an angel. He's not a jinn. He's not an animal. He's not a wind. He's not a tree. He's not this. You know, he mentioned anything in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only thing that left he did not mention is the creator. So why does he say he doesn't have the courage and the guts to say that he is Allah? He just kept quiet at that moment. You know. So these are gulu. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he says, La taturuni kama atarat nasara Isa ibn Maryam. Hakulu abdullahi wa rasulih. He said, do not exaggerate when you're praising me, just like the way the nasara did. He should always say that I am the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. A poet says, he says, Zinil uh, qawla in hawal tamarha muhammadin fa fi kulli qawlin mustahilun wa jaizu. He says, always weigh the statement you are saying whenever you want to praise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, weigh it first. Because not everything is correct, you know. Yeah, we take it in the positive way. 
he meant not everything is correct. You can't attribute everything to Rasulullah because there are some qualities which are not his. You know, there are some qualities which are not his. So weigh the statement first before you say it. Does it fit Rasulullah or you are taking this, the, 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 the right of Allah and giving, giving it to somebody else? You know, if somebody tells you that the Prophet is the one who is giving the dunya and the akhirah, I don't know what do they mean, as if these people never studied the sunnah of the Prophet And also, it's one of his knowledge, you know, uh, some part of his knowledge is the knowledge of the lohu al-mahfuz, wal-qalam, and the, and the pen itself. Whatever the pen has, Rasulullah also has. What kind of faith is this, you know? What kind of belief is this? I believe Rasulullah if he is there, he will definitely fight them. But anyway, so exaggeration when it comes to praising Rasulullah is really wrong because sometimes you might take him to the divinity. Somebody says, MashaAllah was shit. The Prophet got angry. You know, in the Qul, MashaAllah, Faqat. I was going to say, when Allah, if Allah SWT wish, you know, Faqat, only, or keep quiet. They said, we, we, we are seeking. Allah's intercession from you, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet Sallallahu got angry with them. He said, Atadri man Allah. Atadri man Allah. You know who is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala for you to say that Allah SWT is interceding, you know, from me. You know who is Allah. So the leader of the Muwahideen was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He never accept anyone to put him in the position of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. He always fight those ones and fix them, you know. Whenever he sees somebody who is tilting and going against it to hate the Prophet Allah so fix it. قَالَ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُمْ وَاحِدٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your Lord is alone. The one that you worship is alone and he has no partner at all. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَامَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَارِتِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Whoever believes and whoever hopes, you know, to have a clear and an excellent meeting between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he should, <coughs> sorry, he should always make sure that he does al-amal salih. What is al-amal salih? The, the action which is based on the tawheed, ikhlas, and doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and also according to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَا يُشْرِكُ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا and he doesn't associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ayah, I really urge you to study it properly and to remember it every single moment of your life. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based the success in the life of any one of us on these two things. You know, ikhlas or mutaba to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ikhlas wa mutaba, you know. It's, uh, everyone should know it. You know, you cannot succeed unless if you have this ikhlas with you and also mutaba to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ay kama annahu ilahun wahidun la ilaha siwah fa kathalika yambaghi an yakun an takun al-ibadatu lahu wahdahu. Just like the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one to be worshipped, this is the meaning of ilah. And also, he should be the only one Everyone is worshipping. By the name Ilah, Ilah means al ma'bud bi haq. So it means it is necessary for every uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make sure that they don't associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tafarrad bil uluhiyya, the divinity is his, and as such, ibadah also should be his alone. Qala fal amalu salih, huwa al khali min al riya'i al muqayyadu, min al riya'i muqayyadu bi as sun. So he says, Al Amal Salih, who will Khali Minar Riya, will Mukayyadu be Sunnah. He says, Al Amal Salih, this says the action that is away from the Riya, you know, and also which is restricted to the Sunnah of the Prophet. If you do something, you know, but you don't have the class in it, Allah SWT will throw it away. Allah will never take it from you. If you do something, you have the ikhlas, but you do it in your own way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw it away. So you must make sure that you don't associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all of your actions. And also in your mutaba'ah, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should make sure that you don't associate partner 
uh, with the Prophet ﷺ in that regard. It means you follow alone Rasulullah ﷺ in the methodology of how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what some scholars call Tawheed al hakimiyah to get an idea, al hukumu illahi tawheed al risala. No, not tawheed al hakimiyah. Tawheed al risala. Tawheed al risala means you believe that Rasulullah is the last and the final one, and there is nobody with the Prophet in that regard. Until the day of judgment, nobody will come with different things. Even Isa السلام, when he comes, he's not going to come with a different sharia. Isa السلام, is going to come to us to apply the sharia of the Prophet. وكان من دعاء عمر بن الخطاب اللهم اجعل عملي كله صالحا واجعله لوجهك خالصا ولا تجعل لأحد فيه شيئا and it's part of the dua that Umar usually say he used to say اللهم اجعل عملي كله صالحا يا الله make my deed you know all of my deed as al-amal al-salih. Al-amal al-salih is the one that fulfills these two conditions. Al-ikhlas wa al-mutabah. Okay? If doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam precisely in it. وَجَعَلُهُ لِوَجْهِكَ خَالِصًا And Ya Allah, make whatever I am doing خالصا لوجهك for you alone. وَلَا تَجَعَلْ لِأَحَدٍ فِيهِ شَيْعَ And Ya Allah, do not let anyone to take any portion of it. Ya Allah, make all of my deeds to please you and make them for your sake alone. And do not uh, let anyone take any portion in it. وَهَذَا الشِّرْكُ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ يُبْطِلُ ثَوَابِ الْعَمَلِ وَقَدْ يُعَاقَبُ عَلَيْهِ إِنْ كَانَ الْعَمَلُ وَاجِبًا Ibn Qayyim says, this type of shirk destroys the righteous deed of a person. Whatever you do it, I'm sorry, I'm calling it righteous deed. It is not righteous. It destroys the deed of a person. Whatever you do and you do not fulfill the condition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy it alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want it. Allah doesn't want it from you. A person might be punished also by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if that action is wajib because it will be something which is rejected by Allah. And as such, you do not fulfill the, the need and the requirement. فَإِنَّهُ يَنزِلُهُ مَنزِلَةً because if you associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will be like somebody who did not actually observe that act. So as such a person will deserve the punishment because he stays away from following the command. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, innama amara bi ibadatihi ibadatan khalisa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to worship him a sincere worship. قال تعالى وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا الله مخلصين له الدين حنفا. They have never been commanded to do anything except to worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى مخلصين له الدين. They will be having the خلاص for Allah سبحانه وتعالى له. حنفا أي ما إلين عن الشرك. You know those people who you know stay away from the shirk completely. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not command us to do anything except to worship him alone without associating partner with him. And also we adopt the religion of monotheism, that's mean the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without associating any partner with him. So whoever does not observe ikhlas in his ibadah, he is not following the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his command. So whatever he is doing is something else other than that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to do. And as such, it will never be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from him. وَلَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take it from him. وَيَقُولُ اللَّهُ أَنَا أَغْنَ الشُّرَكَاءِ عَنَ الشِّرْكِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I أَنَا أَغْنَ الشُّرَكَاءِ عَنَ الشِّرْكِ أَغْنَ means, I don't have any need. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us that people, 
you know, uh, associate partner with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, uh, is telling us that he's so rich, he doesn't need all of those things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need those partners. So, فَمَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَشْرَكَ فِيهِ مَعِيَ غَيْرِ تَرَكْتُهُ وَشِرْكَهُ أَوْ فَهُوَ لِلَّذِي أُشْرِكَ بِهِ Whoever does an act and he associate partner with me, you know, was supposed to be done for me alone, but he put along with me somebody else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَهُوَ لِلَّذِي أُشْرِكَ بِهِ So that action will be going to that person. I don't want it at all. SubhanAllah. Allah says, if he commands you to do something and you don't want to do it for him alone and you associate partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of that doing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he will leave you with the thing. Taraktu wa shirka. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am going to leave you with your, with your shirk. Wa ana minhu bari. And I have disconnected myself from that, from that action. This is really, really something that you know, so I say that a person should uh, pay attention to it, you know, and make sure that you monitor your activities because these type of things sometimes they take place without the knowledge of the person who is who is doing. You know, sometimes they happen without the knowledge of the person who is who is engaging in them. So a Muslim should make sure that nothing comes from you except that you you monitor your action. You know, you know what exactly you're doing to avoid falling into shirk uh, without without knowledge. Okay, so I guess uh, this should be the best place, inshallah, to stop. Uh, I, and I, if I continue with the uh, next uh, uh, paragraph, uh, I might be uh, rushing. So let's stop here, inshallah, and take the questions, uh, inshallah, from uh, those people who are there, be it in my hands, which Barakallahu Fikum, Zakumullah Khairan, Salaamu Alaikum Rahmatullah. Zakumullah Khairan, Shaykh. Ameen, Abdul Rahman. The first question is that it's still How should you advise people that some of their cultural practices can be considered shirk, especially? If they are in the family, and are much older than you and have much more knowledge. Uh, the best in this approach, Athana, uh, is to use the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Don't you ever use your word. Uh, smile, sit with them, and use the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Tell them that this is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Read first and let them understand it correctly. You know, after they get it correctly, and then you tell them. That's why what some people are doing should be stopped, you know, because it goes against this sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu This is very clear, you know, quote from them, uh, from the sunnah and try get from those uh, big scholars, big, big scholars whom they respect, you know, that interpret the hadith in the way you are interpreting it and give it to them. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, they will listen, you know, because if you use your own word, they will compare you with their own scholars. They will say you are very young, you know, when uh, you don't know more than our scholars, they have already gone through this, you don't have knowledge like them, they have knowledge, you know, all of these things that we have heard, you know, from uh, those people trying to justify their wrongdoing. So use the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu first, let them understand it correctly. Some of them might be asking you, okay, then if this is the case, then what about what people are doing then? Yeah, then alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah they make life easier easier for you you know you know so start with this first and then be in light Allah and adorn it with uh, the statement of the scholars in terms of the interpretation of that hadith you know the scholars that you believe those people respect you know look into the madhab they follow inshallah you will find among the scholars of that madhab some scholars you know who said what you believe in you know use that as a weapon be in light Allah they will listen inshallah azawajal Barakallahu feekum. Shaykh, you mentioned uh, an example that some of the cultural practices uh, I spoke of that are seen in Pakistan include the uh, amulets, ta'weed, protection, or du'a, believing the dead could come back to this earth and you can speak to them and such things. 
It's not only in Pakistan, Thana. Almost everywhere in the world you see this uh, Taweeth, talisman, you know, and amulets, you know, are all there. So Alhamdulillah, this one you find straightforward hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu that talks about the Tama'im. Man allaka tamimatan wakilayli, you know. Hadith of Abdullah ibn Rasul when he found his wife having some something that she tied on her, you know, he removed it and threw it away and say, You, the family of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected you from shirk, you know. So, all of these things, trace them uh, and go and get them and then look into the interpretation of the scholars, you know, the scholars who you believe that those uh, people that you're approaching, you know, believe in them, I mean, respect them, you know use their statement to interpret the, the sunnah you know so that they can find it easy to be to be accepted inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to truth and and uh, grant us uh, tawfiq in our da'wah yeah uh, question by sister monique assalamu alaikum yeah assalamu alaikum 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 assalamu Will be benefiting the person and causing the sirat. Uh, uh, come again, Abraham. Say it again. The life of the man that a person has mm. will it be benefiting the person when it comes to causing the sirat? Yeah, the the life in iman, right? The the light of iman, nurul iman. Ah, the light of iman. I thought he's talking about life in iman. Yeah, this is what helps the person, you know, in uh, when it comes to the crossing of the sirat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about this in Surah to al, uh, Al-Hadid. You know, وَتَرَ الْمُؤْمِنِ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَسْعَانُوا رُهُمْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ بُشْرَاكُمْ الْيَوْمَ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزِ الْعَظِيمِ يَوْمَ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتُ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا انْذُرُونَا نَقْتَبِسْ مِنْ نُورِكُمْ إِلَى رَجُعُ وَرَاءَكُمْ فَالْتَمِسُوا نُورًا فَضُرِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورِ اللَّهِ بَابٌ بَاطِنُهُ فِيهِ الرَّحْمَةُ وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ قِبَلِهِ الْعَذَابُ يُنَادُونَهُمْ أَلَمْ نَكُنْ مَعَكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى وَلَكِنَّهُ وَلَكِنَّكُمْ فَتَنْتُمْ أَنْفُسَكُمْ مَتَرَبَّصْتُمْ مَرْتَبْتُمْ مَغَرَّتْكُمْ الْأَمَانِيُّ حَتَّى جَاءَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ وَغَرَّكُمْ بِاللَّهِ الْغَرُورُ فَالْيَوْمَ لَا يَسْخَطُ مِنْكُمْ فِدْيَةٌ وَلَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مَأْوَاكُمُ النَّارُ هِيَ مَوْلَاكُمْ وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرُ So these ayat you know if you have time, check them in Surah to Al Al Hadid. This is the page number three in the Surah. If you use the normal Quran printed in Medina, that should be on the page number three. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talks about the believers crossing the Sirat. You know, yes, anurhum bain aidihim wa bi'aymanihim. You know, I have the light given to them. You know, so that's when the light of the iman is going to be reflected and manifested. You know, on the Sirat. So. The more Iman you have here, the more light you have in the hereafter. That's why the, the bad one, the bad ones will be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be asking the good ones, you know, to share with them the light. You know. And then they will tell them, You have to go back and get it, you know. You cannot get the light on the Sirat. You have to get it before the Sirat. Yeah, so they are referring to the dunya, you know. You can only get the light from this dunya. The prayer you're praying, the wudu you're making, you know, uh, especially the prayer. These are when the, when the light is going to be manifested, you know. So the munafiqeen and the bad one will be asking for help. So when the believers will reply to them, we cannot share with you the light, you know. You have to go back and get it in the way we got it. You know? So, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذُ رِبَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورِ اللَّهُ بَابْ بَاطِنُهُ فِيهِ الرَّحْمَةُ وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ كَبِلِ الْعَذَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make between them a barrier, a wall. You know, from the side of the good ones, there is mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the side of the evil one, that is a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. Yinadunahum alam nakum ma'akum. Qalu bala walakinnakum fatantum anfusakum atarabbastum wa artabtum wa gharratkum al-amani hatta jaa amrullahi wa gharrakum billahi al-gharu. You know, the wrongdoers and the bad ones who did not have the light and the non-Muslims who died you know, in Kufr, you know, they will be calling them, Alam nakum ma'akum, we are with you in, this, in that dunya, please help, help, help. We know you, please. They will tell them, yes, you are with us. 
But unfortunately, you deserve yourself. Instead of focusing on that which benefits you, you do not do that. And you always think that evil is going to take place in the sight of the believers. You know, and you never have certainty in that which you're doing. You always have doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in everything you do. And you are deceived by that ambitions and wishes, you know, of this dunya. You get totally distracted. Allah says, wherever kum billahi al And you let shaitan deceive you, and the dunya deceived you. So today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, there will be no ransom that will be taken from you. And the non-believers also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never take any ransom, you know. No way for a person to pay any compensation to ransom himself. So after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an excellent conclusion, which I really want us also, together with that ayah of Surah Al-Kahf, to understand it properly. You, know. you really need to pay attention to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكِرِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, isn't it the best time for the believers to have a taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? SubhanAllah. Did you hear that, my dear brothers and sisters? He said, Allah is talking to us now. He said, isn't it the best time for you to reflect? You, know, you Allah, it is the best time. Because other than this time is a doubtful time. You know. Angel of death might visit you at any moment and then it will be what? Tragedy. So Allah says, isn't it the best time for you to reflect? And taqsha qulubuhum. You know, lidhikrillah. Isn't it the best time for your heart to be humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Umayyazala bin al-Haqq and the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which he reveals of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, isn't it the best time for you to reflect and to understand the message and to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in humility and humbleness and to have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to be like those uh, people who received the book before us. You know, it was quite long Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the book, prophet after prophet, you know, subhanAllah, rejection after rejection. Allah says, فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكِثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ the vast majority of them are fasikin, you know. The heart becomes so rigid, so solid, you know. Cannot be, <coughs> sorry, shaked by anything. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا وَجَدْنَا لِأَكْثَرِهِمْ مِنْ عَهْدٍ وَإِنْ وَجَدْنَا أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَفَاسِقِينَ In Surah Al-A'raf, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about uh, the prophets and he made that excellent conclusion. He says, تِلْكَ الْقُرَانَ قُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَائِهَا وَلَقَدْ جَاءَدْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَمَا كَانُوا لِيُؤْمِنُوا بِمَا كَذَّبُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ كَذَلِكَ يَطْبَعُ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِ الْكَافِرِينَ وَمَا وَجَدْنَا لِأَكْثَرِهِمْ مِنْ أَهْدٍ مِنْ أَهْدٍ وَإِنْ وَجَدْنَا أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَفَاسِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we did not find the vast majority of them, you know, to be those people who are keeping that promise between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship him alone and to have the clear acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنْ وَجَدْنَا أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَفَاسِقِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We definitely found those people who are before them to be among the fasikeen. The vast majority of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا وَجَدْنَاهُمْ إِلَّا فَاسِقِينَ We do not find them except in the state of fisk. And that's also a message to each and every one of us who believes that the truth is supposed to be discovered by the amount of the people following it. No, the truth is not discovered by how many people are following. The truth is supposed to be discovered by how much it is based on the sunnah of the Prophet or the revelation in general. So that's uh, a very important question, as uh, Sister Morni. Uh, we will be uh, giving the light based on our own iman when we are crossing the, the sirat. And as such, a person should make a right decision to always be... Uh, at the stage of increase, you know, the state of increase in this light, you know. Always try your best to make sure that you are increasing the light, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and tawfiq in life. Barakallahu feekum. Yes, Abdul Rahman.
I mean, what are you doing? Uh, no, no, a close news has already been written. When one does actions that increase it, just giving charity, does it prove the amount of that person's risk that has already been written, or does it prove the barakah? Both, Uzair, both. A barakah and a physical increase also. But the one that is taking place right now is already written also. That one also is written. 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote that Uzair is going to be kind you know, to his parents and as such. And I'm just giving an example, and inshallah it is like that, bidin Allah. Uh, for instance, Uzair is going to be kind to his parents and as such, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases his risk from this amount to the other amount. So both are written, the first amount and the second amount at the same time. So when the Qadr takes place, the second Qadr will take place, not the first one. To get an idea. If you look at it as a cause, the causes for the increase is your righteous deed. Do you get an idea? But if you look at it as far as Qadr is concerned and writing is concerned, they are written at the, at the first place. That at first you are supposed to get only one ringgit, but now you get billions of ringgit because of your kindness to your parent. May Allah subhanahu wa make you that person and all of us. And of course, barakah also will take place in the risk, inshallah. Uh, another question, Uzair. Uh, I mean, Nowadays, okay. there are movements in the West to boycott big companies that produce chocolate as they claim it involves child slavery, where children in Africa are forced to farm cocoa. What should a Muslim stance be this? Eat whatever Allah's matter make halal for you. <laughs> Eat whatever Allah SWT make halal for you. This is what I will say. Anything that is halal, just eat. But if you have the command from the government, that let's say in Malaysia here, the government asks us to boycott something which is harmful to the Muslim, uh, or uh, some somebody misbehave towards Rasulullah SAW, or towards Islam, and the government is taking the initiative, then we follow that one. You know, other than that, you take what Allah's water makes halal for you. So, is it possible that, for example, we can like uh, raise campaigns uh, just to raise awareness that you know, this should not be done? Yeah, we can. We can talk about instead of boycotting the, the thing. We can talk about how things should be done. You know address those government. Those people, they know what to do, you know. They know who is doing what. They can go and force them to stop doing the injustice, but they don't. You know, let them go and do the right thing, you know. Stop them from committing the injustice against others. And also these type of things, you have to study them and see, is it really true that it's taking place, you know? And well, where is it happening, you know? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and tawfiq. Uh, but if, let's say, this is what is necessary for you to stop the injustice against somebody, you know, we have to check first and see, is it really, really happening in that way? In the way it is alarming, you know, uh, people are forced and they're not paid, you know. Uh, if this is the, the, the truth, that's, in, that's uh, slavery, yeah. It's good to boycott that, those things so that they will stop doing it. If that boycott will have an impact. Hmm. I had a question about this one, a follow-up question. Okay. Uh, there is some countries, like uh, recently these countries' products were boycotted, but then like every other product is you know, supplied by this country and some of these products are our daily necessities and we use them on a daily basis. So I was having this conversation with a few people in the I told them that um, if you want to boycott them, boycott to the extent where it's possible for you. And uh, I mean, your necessities, you just take them. And if you find an alternative for that from a Muslim uh, seller or Muslim brand, then go for them. But and you don't completely boycott them and just tell everyone. Kill yourself also. 
Yeah, this is the problem of the Muslims because we depended too much on them, you know. That's why sometimes it doesn't work. It's uh, just like a, a conference they said in Sudan. Yeah, that somebody was not. I think I did not watch, but somebody said there was a conference in Sudan about boycotting the the Western uh, products, you know, and things. You know. And then the presenters, the presenters of the papers, the lecturers, you know, each and every one of them in, pro, in front of him, you see nothing but Coca Cola and. <laughs> so somebody says, "What exactly are we doing?" You know. <laughs> So he said, at least you bring the traditional Sudanese drink, Karkade, and uh, you know those ones of Roman, you know. <laughs> yeah, at least you brought the, those traditional drinks you put, you know. You know, from the beginning of the, in the place of the conference, they show that, yes, we can't, you know. <laughs> so a person should, should do whatever he can do. Let's say you need to buy something. You know, even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran when you reach the, the case of need, the situation of need, you know, even the things that are haram you can take. But this one, they are not haram initially. You, know, you get the idea. So when somebody is in need of something, these are the basic need and necessities, a person should go for them. Extra amount, or if he can find an alternative, then he goes for the alternative for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. That's why Ibn Uthameen, when he was asked about the boycott, he says, Kul ma ahallahu <laughs> Because in most instances, it's not effective. And there are some where when it happens, it really affects them. And they really got in trouble. And they, uh, like what we have heard about the one, that, this uh, cousin, cousin who uh, uh, criticized the Prophet you know, I don't want to dirty my, my tongue mentioning his name. Uh, or allow the Prophet ﷺ, uh, 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 I mean, allow the criticism against Rasulullah ﷺ in his own place. They said it really affects the country so much, you know. You know that's why they talk directly and indirectly that Muslims should think, you know. And Alhamdulillah, until now, you know, if you follow the news, you can see that country is not stable. SubhanAllah, one of the most hated entities on earth is, is him. Wherever he goes, his own people are throwing, you know, and shoes and eggs on him. You know, when, they, when they throw sh he throws shoes on a person, that's the peak of disrespect, you know. <laughs> After recently, also, I think somebody threw the egg on him. If he doesn't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the early things that Allah subhanahu wa has given him before he meets him, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. Oh, Allah guide him. Let us see the time he will convert to Islam here and the whole country, inshallah. Hmm. Allah grant us good. Yes, Abdul Rahman. Um, sister, now I added a point to this. Like, uh, sometimes uh, when these countries they have their branches in the Muslim world and the people start boycotting them, the Muslims in those countries which are working with this company or uh, associated with these companies, they also get, get affected. affected. Yeah. 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 Now, when it is necessary to go for that, Thana, we just apologize to those people who are working. They also should actually participate in demonstrating and protesting against the company. The company is going to reflect. If, let's say, they just sacrifice some of their salaries, you know, although they face some difficulties, but they do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it takes actually a few, few, few hours, you know, for them to fix, to apologize and fix it, you know. I was listening to the news, you know, we, we need to take actions like that, you know. They touch the same country, this country, you know, France. They touch one of the countries, they block their education system. They close one school. And they said they will not agree with any other school to be established. Okay, that's what the news says, you know, one day. And the president of that country, you know, they forgot while they are doing that. They have more business in, the Muslim, in that Muslim country than what <laughs> that country has with them. He closed 70 something educational centers which are all owned by them with immediate effect. 
subhanallah in few minutes they change their their statement they permit that school to be open again and also to give them license to come back you know in the way they are yeah, we they need muslim to uh, to be a czar nowadays we, we become followers and tails you know that's why they do whatever they want you know they need somebody to tell them to to draw their attention to tell them who they are Clearly, al adab, you know, tell you, they have no adab, no manners, you know. Why? Because we give them that, you know. So that's uh, how all the Muslim leaders should be, you know. Uh, these are internal affairs and all of these things, and nobody should, should touch, you know, uh, Muslim territory, you know, and, and go with it, you know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good and shows the time whereby the strength will come back to Islam and the Muslims. Islam is, 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 is the strongest uh, thing and it remains like this. But we are the one who will be in, in trouble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the time the strength will come back to uh, the Muslims, you know, and our leaders, inshallah. Uh, question that you like, Salaam Alaikum. Uh, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum. Surah al-Mulk, uh, it's recited every night, is it? Yeah. But a person should understand that this is based on all of these surahs that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, you know. Uh, you read them and you try to put them into practice and action. Surah al-Mulk will not benefit a person who doesn't use Surah al-Mulk in his life. Allah grant is good. It's good to read it and also use it in, in your life. Yeah. About Surah al is it okay to recite it on Thursday night or it should be done on Friday? Yawm al Juma. It's better to do to read it on the yawm, the day, not at night. But if you miss it, you can read it any day, inshallah. And inshallah, you will get the reward, be Allah. The day, the, the day in this Shabbat starts from after Fajr? Uh, start from after Fajr, yeah. Until Maghrib time. Okay, Barakallahu Feekum wa Ahsan Ilaykum Fi Dunya Wal Akhira. Asallahu Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Yukarimakum Fi Dunya Wal Akhira wa Ihfadakum wa Ihmiyakum Min Jameel Al Asqam Wal Awbi'a. إنه بكل جميل كفيل سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهر أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته